was a rumble in the jungle once I heard dad was outside again counting birds And mama plugged in the nightlight and I saw the queen of the world Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Golden Hour Birth Podcast We are your hosts Liz and Natalie And tonight we have our part two of our chat with Emma Ginder, who is a doula and student midwife here in St. Louis. And last week, we talked to her all about her journey becoming a doula. And this week is the second half of that interview, where we talked to her all about her um, journey to becoming a midwife. So I'll just jump right back into that and enjoy the episode. Thank you. Are the majority of your clients like wanting a natural birth in the birthing center or the hospital? Or do you have a lot of clients who are like, they definitely know they want an epidural and Mm -hmm. want to go that route? I would say, um, I mean, my entire practice, it's honestly been Mm 50-50. I've been incredibly blessed and like so, so deeply fortunate that it's the last three or four years of my practice has been heavily Mercy Birthing Center. Uh, But a lot of people know, like when they talk to their OB and like maybe they might have a little bit of a pre-existing condition or they do have a pre-existing condition or they've had a rough pregnancy, you know, whatever, like there's a little bit more coming into it. Their OBs, a lot of OBs specifically send people to me because they know that I've had a lot of heart issues. So like when I was pregnant and had to go through my labor and delivery, it had to be highly medicalized because of me, not because of Sam, but because my heart sucks, you know? So I would say my practice is really 50-50 on like highly medicalized or birthing center, whether it's Mercy Mercy Birthing Center, freestanding or home birth. Mm -hmm. And then is there like, is it mostly first time moms or second time moms or kind of a mix? It's honestly kind of a mix. I would say this past year though, I've had more second, third, fourth time moms, Mm. but I have been, you know, doing way more home birth this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say all of my families who specifically find me and want to work with me because of like highly medicalized situations, they are all first-time parents. I I've only had maybe two or three multiple, like multi moms with pre-existing conditions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're usually all first-time moms. And then like all of my mercy birthing center moms are nine times out of ten first time moms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have there been like more home births be- because of the pandemic? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's, I mean, definitely the the fear behind the pandemic and the, you know, unfortunately, medical institutions having to lock things down out of protection for themselves, but also like there was so much about COVID that we just didn't know in the beginning. We we're afraid of being alone and like no birthing person should ever be alone. I don't care if I have to go get a scuba suit and rig up some crazy oxygen situation for you so that you can be in there with your loved one. Like no birthing person should ever be alone. And that fear was physically seen and felt, you know, in parts of our country, you know, so a lot of families chose alternative birthing routes out of preservation for, you know, their safety. And it was scary. Like it you know, so we did see a big rise in home birth, you know, but fortunately now we are seeing a lot of data, like more like really good evidence-based, heavily researched data on the safety of hands-off physiological birth, whether it's in a freestanding birthing center or at home, sorry, for healthy moms. You know, they can for a healthy mom and a healthy baby, so long as they're both doing well, progressing well throughout their pregnancy, they're healthy to begin with. There's no pre-existing conditions. I would say there's no need, but like they should feel fully supported and have the information and the education. I mean, ideally perfect world before getting pregnant, but during their pregnancy to have more holistic integrative health care for their pregnancy and their labor and birth. And to have the actual opportunity to birth their baby where they feel most comfortable. And God forbid, if something were to change within the last few weeks, have the opportunity to go where they can get higher level care. But so long as everything's fine, like I believe their first opportunity should be at home if they're comfortable at home or, you know, 
<laughs> sorry, even if I was healthy enough to have a home birth, I wouldn't feel comfortable birthing in my own home. Like just the layout of my home, I think would just like be too much for my OCD <laughs> to handle. But like if I could birth in like a, a just a free state, like, oh, it's like a nice like hotel for lack of better terms, like how do they, and then I don't have to clean the mess up and I can go home. Like I would love that. And I think moms should be given that opportunity first. And then God forbid if something does happen, then okay. Like we can seamlessly transfer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 There definitely has been a big shift and I love it. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, not only because like I'm training to become a home birth midwife, but like it feels like families are getting more of their power back, more of their confidence back, more just pure trust over the process. And I'm really happy to see that. That's awesome. I know, you know, I was pregnant in like early, like late 2020, early 2021. And like a lot of the birth podcasts I listened to were like, they went to a home birth last minute because of the pandemic or their doulas like would come on virtually. I'm like, Mm -hmm. I can't even imagine having a virtual you. Yeah. Although Yes, like you'd probably show up in the same way. It would just be so hard and like such a barrier Yeah, to the care I really did have while you were in person. Like people don't realize the importance of that physical touch Mm -hmm. and just physically having someone like in your face, like you've got this. Yeah. I'm going to do this. Like, (laughs) you know, I think technology has come leaps and bounds. And like when COVID was really bad, I'm I'm so thankful that we have Zoom and that I was still able to like talk to people, you know, before they had their baby. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like you're right. Like it's not, it's not the same, yeah. you know, it's not, it's not the same for either the partner or the birthing person to not physically have, you know, their person. Like we become that family's person and, you know, to be told because of the unknown, you can't have that person there with you. Like, I mean, talk about a blow to the nuts. When did you start your process of becoming a midwife? What year is this? 2022? So <laughs> it's been like a couple years now. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, it's been, it's been a while, you know? Yeah, it's been a good, well, I think actually, Jill, what month is this? August? Yeah, it's been two years. <laughs> My time is like so skewed. Yeah, it's been a couple years and been that last, that last little bit trying to get over the hump. <laughs> yeah, earlier it's you been said fun. you had like 40 catches. Left. Mm-hmm. Does that mean like, for, like, for so, yeah, catching? you have to be a primary and that's like the last part. So I'm like, oh my God, I just want to be done. Oh. So, I yeah, I, it's, it's funny because like, I want to be done because like I want to I want to actually like be able to I want to be able to use everything I'm learning like as a student you know you can't it's like it's essentially like being a doula but like having like all this like knowledge you know yeah I just want to be able to like do it but then at the same time it's like no I don't because I'm scared (laughs) you know like it's the whole like being a brand new doula again like yeah yeah when Jen was our doula she was I think she like had just become a midwife Mm -hmm. and was like transitioning out of being a doula. Mm -hmm. And I remember her her just being like, like, especially after I had baby like, oh, did the midwife not tell you like to do this or this Mm -hmm. or this? And like just so much knowledge. Mm -hmm. I, I could, you could tell that she like really wanted to like, (laughs) yeah. He's a midwife. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Just a doula. Like that's, it's how to be hard. hard. Like, (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Cross the line. And I mean, even like as a doula, like, I mean, you guys know, like I'm a big old nerd, you know, <laughs> like <laughs> it is really hard. Not to like, oh, did you try this? Have you tried this? Like, just talking about this? Like, it is so hard. Like, <laughs> and that's one thing, like, I don't want to stop dueling. Like, just because I become a midwife, like one birth on my calendar every month is always going to be a doula client. Like, mm-hmm. because that's just, that's just what I want to do, mm-hmm. you know? And I... I am pretty fearful for how that, like, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's, well, yeah, like, I, I'm afraid that it's just going to be a tough, you know, because it's, I mean, you know, the state we live in, like, they're just ready to get us, <laughs> you know, so it's like, <laughs> 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So have kind of like the doula question I asked a little bit Mm -hmm. ago, like was, did you have to do a lot of coursework for the midwifery and then kind of go into like the hands-on clinical Mm -hmm. work? Yeah. So, so I, I am going through indie birth midwifery school. Mm -hmm. So I actually chose a really alternative path to becoming a midwife. I know a lot of, I think birth workers in our community be like, what? But I mean, you guys know, like I spent a lot of time in the medical field and taking higher level classes that a lot of the same classes I would have had to take. And if I would have gone to like one of your typical schools, I've already done. So I was like, I'd rather save my money and not take classes that I took four years ago. Like, yeah, just being selfish. Mm -hmm. But I have had a lot of rigorous academic work. Like the program has been way harder than I anticipated homework level wise. I mean, I've had to write more papers than I think I did when I was in college. I've had to do a lot more research, which I mean, I love, I love doing the research, but it's been way more like last, like the first year was way more academically time consuming than I anticipated. And it was really hard to balance that. But the nice thing was like, you know, if you just buckle down and get, I mean, really buckle down and get it done. Like it was intense and like hard as fuck, but like it's done now. Like it's done now. And I can just focus on the actual physical hands-on. And while the actual physical hands-on is hard as fuck and an intimidating in a whole different way, it's nice to not have to be like, I mean, I still have to write at least two papers a week, but, and like two research articles a week, but like, it's nice to have had that slow down a little bit. Yeah. Woo. That sounds hard. I did not know (laughs) it was like that. Yeah. It's a lot. I mean, I mean, I mean, think of like every aspect of conception and then pregnancy and then labor and birth Mm -hmm. and then the very early postpartum, like delivering your placenta, like third stage of labor. And then through the first eight weeks and then throw on an actual baby and like taking care of them. So it's like, for every major thing that you hit, there's a research paper to be written, something to research, something to write about. Like, yeah, yeah. and a little overwhelming. <laughs> there were a couple of times where I was like, I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it. <laughs> like, the midwives do the pre, our, what is it called? The infant care too, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So yeah. we take care of the babies. Well, I mean, so most of the families that I've worked with, they already have a pediatrician. You know, but like we do the first newborn exam, 24 hour, 48 hour, like that first, you know, until you do get in, like sometimes it's a week, three days, whatever, you know, your pediatrician's office when they get you in. So we're doing those first exams and you know how much changes with the baby within the first minutes. Like it's a lot to be responsible for. And it's a lot of knowledge and like heart tones and like, I mean, listening for like finite things. Like it's, Yeah. It's a lot. And like assessing their bodies and their, you know, is everything closed up? Like their sutures, like, I mean, just so many different. It's, yeah, it's really overwhelming, but in a good way. But like, oh, whole heck of a lot to know. And I still feel like I'm like barely making it above the water. (laughs) And then you probably have to like take really good notes for those notes to like transfer to the pediatrician. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I could only assume. And So like I'm used to charting in a whole different way. Yeah. So the charting that we have to, like, I'm actually going to take this class. It's called defensive charting. I have never been more scared in my life. My butthole is so puckered every time I chart. Because like if you say something the wrong way, like, oh my God, it is, charting is, absolutely terrifying like I'm actually so excited to take this class to know like I just need to word everything like this so that I don't get the shit suit out of me because like yeah. fortunately in the state we live in like you say one thing and it's you're done like yeah call on the paddy wagon you're done like yeah, yeah. it's so like that's like so scary you know mm-hmm. did you do I don't know if that's part of like doula work, like charting or like Mm -mm. taking notes of 
times and the birth and all that stuff? Is that not? As a doula, no, you know, because we don't do anything clinical. As a birth assistant, yes, we do all that. Yeah, I mean, that's the nice thing about being a doula is that we don't have to be responsible, <laughs> you know, for stuff like that. But like, yeah, yeah, it's it's intense. And I mean, like, think about like how quickly babies come out. You got to know the time they crown, the time their head comes out, the time their full body comes out. Like, what do they look like? You know, their immediate APGAR scores. Are they breathing? Like, do you need to start resuscitation? Like, I mean, so many different things all at once and you're expected to know like all of it and then to be able to safely put it down so yeah. you get the pants suit out of you, yeah. but also relay enough of the correct information so that when you do pass off care, they've got the whole picture. Yeah, uh, it's yeah. true. I ordered my medical records from my second birth. I, I'm just curious. So I like reading medical records. It's also part of my day job. But since I I had Vivian like very quickly and Jason and the nurse caught her while I was standing next to the bed coming out of the bathtub (laughs) and my medical records are just like, it's just the time and Mm -hmm. the, you know, nurse caught baby and that Mm -hmm. like 10 minutes later, the doctor got there. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Very sparse. Yeah. (laughs) records. (laughs) Yeah. It's funny. Yeah. It is. Do you think like being a doula and your experience in the doula world has made this made this transition to midwifery school and being a midwife easier or harder or it's made it easier in the sense that like the built-in empathy and compassion and will and want and desire and drive is there. Mm-hmm. The longer I've been a doula, the more it's just like I oh, got do it you know but it's made it harder in the sense that you know as a doula I have the beauty and the luxury to get deeply and emotionally invested in my in my clients Mm -hmm. and as a midwife you you do have to remain a little bit detached you know like for example I mean easiest easiest example I can think of is a blood pressure issue so you know as a midwife you're responsible for their clinical care and if you notice that we're having some high blood pressures and they're not coming down and you know you try and do all the things but a family ultimately decides hey we don't we don't want to take medicine we don't want to try herbs or we don't want to consult with our pcp or anything ultimately that's their decision you know and so from a legal standpoint like we have to have them sign all the you know consent papers etc but then we have to make the decision are we comfortable being their care providers, knowing that we're our names on it. So we're on the chopping block. And ultimately, when we have to make the decision that it's not safe for us to remain their provider, like it's, I mean, thankfully, I've never had to do it yet, but like I know I'm going to have to. And like I cannot even fathom severing that tie. Like, because the beauty of a duel is you're not involved like that. So you don't have to worry about it. And like, I know that like, God forbid, if anything does like that happen, like I've got to figure out and like talk to someone more business savvy to see like, how can I truly write it in so that, okay, like this is no longer happening, but like now I'm your doula because like, I don't want to lose that. But like, that's, that is a very, and I know I'm not. And like, I wish time would go slower because I know I'm not prepared for that aspect. I know I'm not prepared you know, because like that's the time where you want to hold that family even closer and like hug them even harder, you know, mm-hmm. but you have to think about yourself in that regard when you are the provider. Yeah. It's a real that's sucky tough. part. I'm not looking forward to it. Yeah. yeah, that's tough. I know when I got broken up with by the birthing center, <laughs> just like pleading with <laughs> Jenny, like, oh, <laughs> but can't, like, can't wait to see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, that was tough. Yeah. So, I, yeah, coming from the other side would be, that'd be hard, too, because you have to hold a hard line. So a lot of the work we do, unfortunately, you know, like, we are, like, our butts are on the line. Like, we are really at risk. But, you know, like, families deserve, like, the way I see it, it's like anyone who decides, hey, I'm ready to explore what it would be like to be pregnant. Mm-hmm. You know, whether you have a partner, you're innocent, like whatever, wherever you are in your life, I don't care. The second you have those thoughts, like you should be able to see a midwife. You should be able to see, like, that's a very 
intimate and vulnerable part of your body and your emotions. And like, we don't know what past that person is coming from. Mm -hmm. They should have the opportunity to see someone in a comfortable environment, you know, like, you know, think of like your typical at a hospital midwife's office or in-home prenatal visit. Like they deserve that. And until they get to a point where it's no longer within their best health interest to be in that care, they should be allowed to pursue that and they should be in feel supported. Like, I don't think we should take away doctors and hospitals, but I don't think for this situation, they should be the instant number one go-to. Now, like, for example, me, like I'm a cardiac mess. So like, of course I would go straight to the hospital, but like, that's a given, like that is a perfect, you know, reason to send someone off to where, you know, there's bigger, better technology, things like that. But for your average person, no, like see what their body is going to do. Be with them every step of the way mm-hmm. on a very intimate level. And then if they need to, then, hey, we've done all this. Here's a soft hand off of care. I'm going to call you, check in on you. But they're going to be, you know, overseen from here. Yeah. I wish that's how it worked. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's like the model or used to be. I don't know how it is now, but like in England, how <laughs> it used to be and call the midwife. Show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, think of oh, like no. German, England, the Netherlands, like how many other countries, like do you see midwife level practitioners first? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, maybe, maybe you're not living in a situation where you could have a home birth. So they have like, essentially, I, I guess the best term would be like a community hospital, but midwives are the actual practice. It's just all midwives. Like, mm-hmm. like how, if that's happening, like pretty much like everywhere else, like how are we not getting that? You know, okay. like not to be like midwives are the superhero, like, come on. But I mean, like just respect the body and like respect the emotional part mm-hmm. of what this is and like bring in the people who can actually support that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's definitely a more holistic approach. Yeah. For sure. Rather than going into your OB for your 15 minute session, mm-hmm. or like trying to just kick you out the door. Yeah. 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 I remember I'm like a, a after I had Sam, I had that retained placenta. So like I had to like go in, you know, like super raw, sore, bleeding out the wazoo, you know, feeling like I was in labor again. And they're like, oh, yeah, we're going to do this. Like, take these pills, take this medicine. We're going to go do a DNC. And I was like, oh, what? My baby? Like, oh, my God. You know? And then, you know, my next visit, you know, in office, like, everything was still, like, really sore and, like, really tender. And they're like, great, we're going to do this exam and we're going to give you an ultrasound. I was like, oh, my God, I'm not ready. Like, oh, my God. Oh, you my know? God. Like, so quick. It's just, yeah, it's like, it's way too abrasive at times. Like, yeah, this just isn't a time. Down there. Yeah. Like, I mean, so much is happening to your body so quickly. It shouldn't be just a, oh, your baby's out. Let's just peek under the hood. Like, no, mm-hmm. no, there's so many things. <laughs> there's a circle behind you of how big 10 centimeters is in violation. <laughs> like, <laughs> we don't need it anything to be (laughs) in there after that (laughs) no not at all (laughs) yikes yeah i think i have i have asked all these questions i I have like a whole new insight on your transformation into midwifery and i i really enjoyed that thank Uh, you but i i know you're gonna kick ass in doula world and midwifery worlds because it's just who you are. Well, you thank it. you. I hope so. Like, I am really scared, like, to be 100% like honest and like vulnerable and transparent. Like, I have been extremely quiet, I think, about my process and journey because I really am afraid to truly like step into the light and like announce to the community, like, how I want to serve. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, 
it's hard to do like anything on your own. Like, you know, it's hard to do that imposter syndrome, et cetera, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm really like, I get really excited. Like when I talk to people about it, like, especially like, you know, past families, you know, because like, I feel like they're my trusted people, you know, but I really hope like, I hope that this is the right step towards actually being able to make a change, like a positive change. Like all I've ever wanted to do my entire life is like, I've seen countless doctors and nurses literally like hold my life in their hands and keep me alive. And while like, I know I'm not doing anything near that, I want to be able to change a family's life for the positive in a way that they didn't know that they deserved and needed. And I do not believe, like, I think that right now we're currently in the situation where it's, it's either black or white, you know, it's either option A or option B. And while it's not like a hundred percent, like concrete and clear in my mind, because I know there's like so many different, like legal, you know, issues and things. I hope with every fiber in my body that when I really am done and like can actually like say like I actually did it like I did become a midwife I really want to integrate both of the two levels of care together in a collaborative and positive and cohesive manner like I don't ever want to stop being a doula because I I I truly believe in my heart that not every birth on my calendar is going to be a family that makes it to deliver with me, that I'm going to transition to be their doula. Because I think that there is this untouched level of care of people that really do teeter, like very finely, like teeter that line between being totally safe, having an out of hospital birth or a birth center birth, like whatever. And needing a more medicalized birth. And I want to be able to care for those people as their midwife until we get to that point. But when it's when or if we do get to that point, I don't want that care to stop. That care should never stop. That deep level of care should never stop. That family still needs to have that one person that's there. But I want to be able to still be respected and show these new providers like, hey, because of how it's set up into your system, you're not going to physically see this person until like four, six or eight weeks postpartum. I'm going to come into their home. I'm going to see them in the office and I'm going to tell you, hey, you need to see this person sooner because of X, Y, Z or hey, we're doing well. Everything's great. And then you can finish off with them. Like that's the type of care I want to bring and what I hope to bring. And I'm, I'm really scared because I know like that shit's going to get eaten alive. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you know how people are on the internet, like, you know, it's just going to get fucking torn out and like criticized and everything. I think it sounds really special coming from. I just hope it can happen. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I would love that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, for example, like, I would feel more comfortable telling you <laughs> over a nurse I see for 15 minutes or an OB I see for 15 minutes that, like, hypothetically, mm-hmm. I was sexually abused as a teenager or something like that. Like, that I – maybe I need to be, like, the one holding the transvaginal ultrasound mm-hmm. and, like, I need to take, like, the approach to let mm-hmm. it into my body. And yeah. Like, not you like so you have that special knowledge and like you're holding that and that's something that like you could tell that medical team that's how I'm kind of thinking of it and that's like that's exactly what I want to be able to do like I mean of course I hope like that's not the situation you know but like you know like I, I think you know for example I you know have a client that I've had two babies with her now and her and I have very similar medical histories and I just think like, God, I know exactly how she feels and like, hell no. Like I remember at her last birth, like this nurse 
if I didn't lock that door, she would have like football, like linebacker style into that bathroom to get her to do what she wanted her to do to fit their protocol. And like, I, I knew what she wanted for her body and what her boundaries were and what she was comfortable with because of her past. Mm -hmm. We've got to be able to confidently and safely say that to the team so that we don't have to do shitty ass things like lock a fucking door. Like, do you know how I hated that I had to do that? Mm -hmm. Like, that's not okay. That's what gives us a bad name. <laughs> but I'm a fight like hell to make sure her body is not going to get violated. Like, you know, like we deserve more. People deserve more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's also like hard saying this too, because I have like my like best friend is a labor and delivery nurse and I love her dearly. And like I mm -hmm. do, you know, I know that she would never yeah. want to like hurt a patient, but it's just, it's like that medicalized feel. Well, like think of like, you know, she has so much like fear of if I don't do X, Y, Z, I could lose yeah. my nursing license. Yeah. And like, you know how hard she worked for that. Like, that's so fucked mm -hmm. that like, that's how we have to live our lives. Like, yeah, ugh, it's, it's gross. Like it's the disgustingly gross reality. Yeah. Yeah. I remember being in the bathroom with with Stephanie and Jason and like the nurse popping her head in and I was just like, please just tell her to go away. Like, <laughs> I'm not getting on the bed again. Like, you don't need to check me. Yeah. Good. I'm not getting out of this bath. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, yeah. I always like feel bad, like putting moms in like a little bubble, you know, but it's like, I understand why like nurses have to do what they need to do but it's like dude like let her labor like mm -hmm. you can see on the monitors out there like let her do her thing we're all good like <laughs> don't don't harsh this vibe like i know you have all of the best intentions but like come on man like read the room like this is not the time like <laughs> yeah but i hate being that person like <laughs> yeah it's sad that it's like needed you know mm -hmm. for sure yeah well and also like you know partners need to feel supported within that space too you know like I hate when partners say like well, I don't know like I don't want to say anything or like at our last birth like man like you need to feel supported like seeing like that's your fucking family like you need to have the whole picture too like just because it isn't physically happening to your body, like you need to know the whole picture too so that you understand why you guys are making these decisions or why this is your partner's preference. You also deserve to have support so that you don't feel like you have to hide, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very true. Yeah. Or they're looking at us while we're in labor. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I don't know, dude. <laughs> like, not at this time. You can't look at me yeah. for what to do next. <laughs> Oh, come yeah. off the clock. <laughs> Clocked out. <laughs> Bye -bye. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you yeah. so much for coming on. It was such a joy to listen. And like, I've wanted to like ask so many questions about your midwifery experience. So I'm happy I finally got you to sit down. And <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Thank you guys for like, I mean, like, I can't even tell you like how like humbling this is. Like, thank you. And then also, like, thank you for being so flexible. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> Seriously, like, no, I literally, like, showed up, like, oh, hey, like, <laughs> let me just, like, run in after I'm peeing. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys so much. Like, I think it's so freaking awesome. You guys are doing what you're doing. I love the content oh. that you're putting out. I mean, seriously, like, thank you for even wanting to have me in your space. Like, this is your space. Like, this is really vulnerable. And it really means a lot that. You thought of me and you had me here. <laughs> I Thank couldn't you. have. Yeah, I couldn't have asked for a, a first time doula. I mean, it's like our first kind of out of birth story mm -hmm. 
interview. Yeah. So I feel like you're probably going to be like our go to like, oh, some listeners have questions. Let's have Emma back on. And like, <laughs> I am oh all God. for it. <laughs> I'm all for it. Like, you know me, like, and I'm like, oh, here, here's all the, the resources for you, too. So like yeah. the shit that comes out of my mouth, like here's an actual like evidence based study. Like, I love it. I'm 110 percent down for that. Like, <laughs> That's what I do all day anyways as a doula. Like, yeah. you're like the most like knowledgeable person that I know probably. <laughs> and you just like pull these facts out of your head. Like, yeah. <laughs> I feel like if I were a cartoon character, I'd be the brain. <laughs> <laughs> or what was that other one? Like Megamind or something. That like big, like testicle looking, like blue brain giant thing. <laughs> you know, just like crazy nerd. <laughs> I'm thinking of like Space Jam because we just watched that. Oh my God. Space Jam is so good. <laughs> That's like 90s baby shit. Oh yeah. <laughs> Man, that. I tried to get Sam to listen to the Space Jam song the other day. And he looked at me and he was like, and no, no. But he did he did go to his room and listen to the Beastie Boys. So I feel like I might have done a little something right. <laughs> yeah, 50 50. <laughs> yeah. Emma, thank you so much for bringing all your knowledge on and just being in this space with us. It was, it was really great to hear and kind of have like a different perspective since we've heard birth stories up to this point. Yeah. So obviously we'll link Emma's Instagram in the show notes so you can find her and, you know, follow her for all her great info. Let's see my corny attempt at reels on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Disco music. <laughs> that was like literally, I mean, literally it's like Saturday Night Fever and the Bee Gees. And I yeah. think there's some ABBA in there. <laughs> And if you made it this far, like, you know, Emma's really good at answering some questions. So you can always like ask us to ask her some questions or something. I would love to like do a QA and a with you. That'd be really fun. Mm -hmm. Send me your questions. I'm happy to answer them. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Maybe we'll get some fun demos with like balloons and stuff. I've been trying really hard to like, I had this idea that I could take a water balloon and stretch the mouth enough to fit like a little um, do you remember the pregnant barbie and like the baby doll that came with the pregnant barbie yeah i had this idea that i could like shove that in there to like demonstrate a baby in the bag of water but (laughs) i've ripped like every water balloon i tried and then i tried with like a normal balloon and like exploded it everywhere (laughs) i think we get some we could get some like fun demos like Make some like Legos, have some balloons, have some Play-Doh, maybe some Jello. <laughs> That'd be fun. I know that there's been like a, stuff. like a felt thing kind of yeah. happening on like oh. Instagram of like a I used to have that up here. Yeah. I literally yeah. used to have that right here. And then I actually I think Sam has it somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. He's gotta play with some in the layers. <laughs> <laughs> so I I don't know. Oh. It's literally right over there. It's like, I can literally see it across from me. Looks like he was just combing through. He was probably looking for the little fake baby at the end of it. (laughs) (laughs) That'd be funny. (laughs) If only he was awake. That would walk out and breastfeed his baby dolls. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. Yeah. So please feel free to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And we will see you next week.